So, hi, hello, hello again, everyone. I hope that you're able to hear me. Maybe someone can quickly write a short note into the chat uh, box uh, if uh, you're able to hear me well, because I once did start a live uh, yeah, live stream once and uh, people had some problems understanding me. There was some um, audio problem, but I hope that this uh, works. Now let me quickly check uh, in um, yeah, on my website if uh, this actually does work. And uh, well, uh, what I would like uh, to do today is I'd like uh, to show you a, um, yeah, a little technique. Yeah, it seems to work, uh, so I'm quite happy about that. So uh, let me quickly remove the echo again. Okay, so here we are again. Yes, great. Uh, loud and clear, thank you. Audio is okay, good. Because yes, I did make a live stream once where I was invited and there was some audio problems um, and yeah. So what do I have uh, here today? Today I'd like uh, to show you a, a little method um, how you can make so-called leaf impressions using glue. So basically what this means is, is we're gonna put some glue on, um, on the leaf here and then uh, we're going to put the glue under the microscope and this way we're able to see the surface structure of the leaf because the leaf um, yeah, kind of makes an impression on the glue. So it's a, quite a, a little bit of an indirect method um, of, of actually uh, putting cells under the microscope because we're able to see the, the surface uh, of the leaf and therefore we are also able to see cells. It's an indirect method. And indeed I've already made a few preparations here and uh, because it takes a couple of minutes for the glue to dry and I've um, yeah, tried different types of glue and this is a general purpose glue containing acetone so it's a relatively fast drying glue but I have uh, tried the same thing also using wood glue and other types of glues and it, it kind of worked. Um, the really important thing um, is, is that um, the leaf is reasonably smooth, um, otherwise it's very difficult to get the glue um, off um, again, okay? So, um, and I'm just gonna show this to you. So today's, uh, <laughs> uh, today's live stream might not be very long, <laughs> but still. So all you do is, is you apply a little bit of glue here on the bottom of the leaf. Okay, um, you might want to use your, your finger to spread it a little bit and then you let it dry. And that's, that's pretty much it. And that's what I've already done here. Now, um, when you want uh, to get the surface of the leaf, um, I recommend that you use the bottom side of the leaf because they are the so-called the stomates. Uh, stomates are, um, or stomata, are openings in the leaf um, where gases like carbon dioxide can go into the leaf for photosynthesis. And uh, it's those uh, stomata that, or stomates that we would like uh, to um, yeah to have a look at okay so um, so yes uh, this is basically what I've tried um, so this um, I'm just gonna show you um, yeah a plant that I've uh, got here um, it's basically these are just uh, plants that I've uh, standing at home yeah so I tried it on this little tree over here and uh, I'm of course also going to do, do this uh, live but I just also prepared and here these are two uh, spots of glue on the bottom side of the leaf and as you can see, the leaf is extremely smooth and uh, therefore it's uh, quite easy to separate the glue. And in, in many leaves, like I'm gonna show you over here in the tomato leaf that I've got, it's very difficult to peel off uh, the glue again. Um, so the choice of plant is, is, is uh, kind, of, um, kind of important here and therefore I've chosen plants, chosen plants that are quite, quite easy um, to do that with uh, because they're kind of smooth. So um, this is basically what I would like uh, to do. So I've already prepared uh, this one over here. This one is um, yeah, from, from the tree that you've just seen. And you see the, this over here, this is uh, the glue, okay? That I put simply on here. Um, yeah, you see, it's, you gotta be careful. It's not connected <laughs> well. No cover glass, uh, no mounting medium. I'm just going to put it on here as it is. And I'm going to put it under the microscope and we're gonna have a first look um, at this, okay? And, um, then we're going to compare this also with uh, the other leaves, um, yeah, leaf impressions. Yeah, and uh, this is how it looks like, okay? Um, yeah, so it doesn't look uh, like a lot. Uh, you see a whole bunch of air bubbles. Okay, so this low power magnification, the four times objective, you see over here the side. There's a dust fiber here as well, yeah. Lots of bubbles. Of course, uh, there's always dust uh, around and it was kind of caught in the glue, but uh, it starts to become a little bit uh, more interesting when you increase the magnification. Huh? So let's do that. Yeah, of course I have to refocus again. And here we already start to see um, a regular pattern, okay? So these are the individual uh, cells um, of the epidermis of the leaf. You gotta look a little careful there. These are tiny, uh, tiny regular structures. 
Um, and uh, yeah, remember, we're looking here at the glue, okay? So just at the impressions that the leaf left behind on the glue. And because uh, you put the glue on it, the glue had, does not have the same thickness everywhere. And this difference in thickness is something that we were able to see. Yeah. Yeah, look, look at this here, okay? Yeah, if you, you're able to defocus a little bit, you're actually able to see the outline of the cells. Yeah. So let's have a look um, around here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, again, and uh, let's uh, go up uh, yet further. So this is now the 40 times uh, objective up. The light is always adjusting itself. And um, yeah, if you are careful, then you're actually also able to see the openings of stomata. And so I don't know if you, if you know a little bit about biology, then you're easily, easily able to recognize them. Let's change the filter setting a little bit here. Okay, now the problem is that I have a difficult time pointing to them. So I'm going to see, well, how can I, okay, maybe I'm just gonna use my finger. Okay, maybe just look at the tip of my finger and I'm just going to try to um, move a cell, you know, some, some, some of those openings right on the tip of the finger and I'm gonna move my head out of the way here. You see this oval here, this oval thing here, like there's almost a line also in the middle, okay. Um, yeah, exactly. You, you're going to see that there are several of these. Um, basically, these are two cells um, that are called guard cells, and uh, there is a gap uh, um, in, in between. And this is uh, where the gases are able to go in and out of the leaf. Okay, um, So carbon dioxide is able to go into the cell and the oxygen is able to go out. And what happens is, is that um, they are able to open and close because during night, um, what happens is that photosynthesis is not is not able to take place, so the yeah, so the opening, the gap, it will actually close uh, off, uh, so that uh, there is no loss uh, of water. Yeah, and so you're able to see those uh, things here, yeah, um, directly on, on on the leaf. And again, this is the the leaf of of. Uh, this palm tree that I have in my living room, a gigantic air bubble here again. So you know what? I don't know. It's uh, I've got also a 60 times objective, but I, it might not work because it's not entirely flat. And the working distance is so small it it might not it might push it to the side. Yeah, didn't work. Okay, kind of pushed. Yeah, it pushed it to the side. Yeah. So let's let's here we are again. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is basically, um, yeah, here you see, actually see it a little bit better, all the way on the other side here in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. There are plenty of these uh, stomates. Yeah, so let's have now a look um, at, um, at, another, at another one. Okay, so again, the desk. Yeah. So um, I'm going to, let's, let's, let's try this one over here. By the way, this here, this is uh, yeah, from a, a lemon tree. Yeah, also, I've got also a video here. Yeah, this is the lemon tree. You notice that, <laughs> uh, yeah, the leaves are kind of uh, bright green. Um, it's a sign that uh, it's not been fertilized enough. This guy, this plant has some kind of a deficiency problem. The leaves are supposed to be a little bit more green, yeah. dark green. They're not, so I have to add a little bit more fertilizer here. Yeah, but essentially what I've done here is, is um, I've also added uh, yeah, um, a little bit of glue on the bottom side. And let's try, let's try to remove that. There are two tiny spots here. It's a little bit difficult for me to see that. And let's try to peel it off. And I don't know if this actually works well. Um, you have to let it dry uh, reasonably well. But if sometimes, if it's too, ah, it went off very nicely. Here it is, okay. Yeah. So let's uh, put this under the microscope. And uh, honestly, um, yeah, I got both off. I've not tried this one yet, really. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a, yeah, a surprise myself. Um, so this is basically the, now the surface of, of a lemon, lemon leaf. Okay, so let's put it in here. And yeah, of course I have to change now the, yeah, the view. And here we are. Let's try to focus this again a little bit. And here we go. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I do see some kind of a regular pattern here. And it's not flat. That's why there's only a thin area which is actually in focus. Let's try the other one over here. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe this is a little bit better. Okay. Again, lots of ear bubbles, but uh, let's increase uh, the magnification again. Up, oh, I bumped now. <laughs> this was the other camera that I bumped in, into. Let me adjust it again here. Here we go. 
Okay. Okay. Again, here you're able to see, uh, yeah, the surface uh, structure. Again, let's go up with the magnification a little bit. And I'm going to. I think the glue might be a little bit thick. But. Ah, this is better here. Okay. All those parallel lines, this might be a place where there's so called the vascular tissue. Okay. And there are some comments here. All these uh, stoma are connected to hollow structures when the, uh, the leaf, uh, like air. Uh, um, yes, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Um, so there's uh, been a comment here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have, do I have a, 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 I don't know if I have a slide of a cross-section of a leaf. Okay, maybe I'll show it to you next time. Yes, indeed. Uh, when you take a cross-section of a leaf, uh, there are different layers. I'm just going to explain this to you. And short answer, those stoma indeed go into the so-called the spongy mesophyll. So there are, um, it's a loose, uh, so that's the lower half or the lower part of the set of the leaf. Um, is uh, basically contains a lot of air spaces and it's a loosely packed layers. Of course, there's cells there, obviously, um, but they're not as tightly packed and there are between the cells lots of air spaces. Yeah? Um, so um, that's the bottom half of the leaf and the top half of the leaf contains the so-called the palisade mesophyll and the palisade mesophyll, these are densely packed cells that are vertical. Um, so because there's light coming in from the top, um, you need a, a really efficient way of, of catching the sunlight for photosynthesis. And for this reason, the top half of the leaf is tightly packed by this pali palisade mesophyll, lots of chloroplasts for photosynthesis. It's also the reason why the top side of the leaf usually is darker in green, because there's simply more cells there that catch the sunlight. So there it's optimized for catching sunlight. And the bottom part, the bottom half of the leaf, um, contains this spongy mesophyll, uh, which uh, contains those air spaces, which then lead to the stoma. Yeah? And uh, the stoma are able to open and close uh, for water conservation, because in, 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 um, uh, during night, uh, when there is no light, um, the stoma close, and then uh, water is not able to evaporate. There are some plants that have a, a different uh, um, mechanism where it's reversed. Uh, but uh, yeah, generally that's the way it is here. I think I think this. I don't know if I'm able to. Uh, if those round things could be the stoma, I don't know about that. But here we see quite nicely that indeed, uh, yeah, the surface um, has different uh, different texture. And I think those parallel cells that you see over here, maybe these are cells that are um, responsible for carrying uh, carrying water. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, I kind of uh, yeah. Um, like uh, I kind of like this uh, quite uh, a lot because it's a really easy way to visualize those stoma and uh, I've been using this also myself because you might already know that I'm a biology teacher in school as well and I'm using this as, as a little lab activity to demonstrate this um, to uh, to the students. Yeah. Ah, yeah, of course, these are stoma. Those round, okay, I'm going to, um, again, I have to point somewhere. Okay, my finger is disappearing again over here. So if you look at those round... Yeah, things that you see here, you might be able to sometimes see a small yeah, little hole yeah, in, over here in, in, in the middle, okay? Yeah, so let's have a look at another one, okay? Um, you know what, why not take uh, the same, the same um, maybe it's already dry because it's just uh, um, the same leaf and let's try to take the top surface here, okay? Just just before the start of this live stream, I applied the glue over here. Yeah, it comes off quite nicely. You might have a difficult time seeing it because of the low contrast. So I'm going to take off uh, the slide again. Um, I've of course also tried uh, to um, yeah take impressions of my own skin. This was a little bit difficult, and I tell you why because uh, <laughs> the skin is not smooth. There's so many hairs. So I, there's some it's difficult to kind of peel it off. So maybe, maybe by uh, putting a little bit of maybe some kind of cream, fatty cream here uh, on before applying the glue that might help. Didn't try this yet. So let's, um, okay, so that's the one over here. Okay, so let's have a look again under the microscope. Let's, so that's the top surface um, of the lemon, lemon tree. And let's have a look here. Okay, again, light adjustment. So that's the 10 times objective. The 20 times objective. Again, refocusing a little bit. Yeah. Again, we see the, the cellular structure of, of, of the epidermis 40 times. Yeah. 
I, I guess um, I guess you get the point. Okay, I'm always looking a little bit at time. Yeah, and uh, of course uh, um, we. I've been doing this on a few plants already. Generally, don't find those uh, openings um, on the top surface because uh, you want to prevent uh, the loss of water. If there are openings on the top surface, then of course the water um, can evaporate quite quickly and uh, this is not uh, what you want. So generally the top surface, the epidermis as you call it, um, um, also contains sometimes a thick layer um, of, of wax called the cuticle, um, which allows um, also to conserve water better. Okay, so let's have just, uh, just a quick look at uh, the others um, 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 as well here, just uh, for the fun of it. Okay, so this was uh, basically number one, this was the, the lemon, okay. Um, let's try this one over here, don't know the name of this plant, but I've chosen it because it was also, also had a smooth bottom side. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here it is. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I have already mentioned you can try different types of glue. A white wood glue also worked, and uh, this one also worked. This one was actually drying a little bit faster. So, and lots of bubbles again. So let's go up. Oh, I bumped again into the camera. So. Let's have a look here. Ah, here these here the stoma can be seen very nicely. Okay, the openings, those oval structures that you see, there, yeah. round ear bubble right next to my ear. Okay, and for those, yeah, I'm, I'm pointing again here. Yeah, the other one over here. Ah, it's it's difficult for me to other uh, way. So this one exactly. Okay. Those structures, yeah, these are the two cells, the two so-called guard cells um, that are able to open and close uh, the stoma, okay? Yeah. You see that uh, um, it works uh, actually quite well with this plant here. Let's go up yet further with a 40 times objective. And here we go, I'm playing around a little bit now with the condenser as well. And uh, yeah, I can adjust a little bit the, the filter here, filter setting, make it a little bit brighter. Yep. Yeah, here, quite nicely visible. Yeah. So in other words, not necessary to make a very thin cuts. So it's possible also to yeah, make uh, impressions of, of the leaves. So I do have two more leaves left uh, over here. Um, I think one, a, a difficult one. We're gonna try this uh, difficult one. Now this is a tomato. Okay, I'm, I'm growing uh, some tomatoes uh, on the balcony. And I put a little bit of glue on the top and of course also on the bottom surface. And I think this is gonna be really difficult to remove um, because first of all, the leaf is quite thin. And second, it's not quite smooth. Uh, so the glue and the leaf, they will probably stick together quite well. And I might actually end up, uh, yeah, destroying the leaf a little bit in the process. Um, let's see how well this works. And yeah, you see it's uh, maybe the difficult to separate. Yeah, but I somehow did manage. <laughs> Again, you are difficult for you to see because of the lack of contrast. So this is now the tomato, the bottom. The bottom side of the leaf of the tomato. I don't know, it, it's, it does appear to be kind of thick, so I'm not quite sure about the quality of this, okay? So let's have a look. So that's the outermost one. Let's switch again to the microscope view. Let's remove, always switch to the lowest, to the lower magnifications first before changing. And here we go again, go up. Okay, it's way out of focus, of course. Let's see if we're any lucky here. Oh yeah, uh, look, <laughs> this might be at least a little, uh, yeah, at least a little hair maybe that you can even see here. Yeah. Uh, look, it's totally blurry because it's not flat. It's so kind of difficult a little bit to, to, to see that. Maybe that's better. Uh. So, and those dark things that you see, you see that they have a little extension. Um, and I think, um, I've seen this also, um, also on some other leaves, I, I think this could be the impressions of the tiny little hair, okay, that uh, the leaf has on the bottom. 
Um, we are from a biological perspective. Um, um, it's uh, there are plants uh, that uh, um, have those here on the bottom side uh, to minimize evaporation. Now, why is that? Um, because those uh, stoma that I talked about, okay, um, um, when they're open uh, during the day, of course, uh, they allow for gas exchange, carbon dioxide going in, oxygen going out. But of course, this is also a gigantic loss of water. And in order to minimize the water loss, sometimes over the opening, there are little um, hair growing, um, which uh, reduces the diffusion of, of, uh, of, of the water. Yeah. So this, um, with this one, I'm yeah, a little bit like as expected, I'm not entirely happy. Okay. Um, but we are able to see some of the surface structures as well. Um, a little bit more, those tiny little hair. Yeah. I think these must be the hair. Yeah. If, if you look at it, it's kind of like a round and then it's kind of, uh, yeah, it becomes more pointed. And this also uh, makes it difficult uh, for the, um, for the glue to be separated. So, but I did um, also make a, an impression of, um, of the top surface. Okay. So let's try this here as well. Let's try the top surface um, of, of the tomato. Yeah. Maybe this, uh, it actually appeared to be a little bit smoother, the top surface. So I'll carefully remove it. Yes, it uh, still, it likes to stick a lot. Um, you have to play around a little bit with the amount of glue. And maybe sometimes reapplying a second layer might also be helpful. Here it is. And um, yeah, I'll put it on here. This slide here is the second one. So let's have a look um, at this one. Again, need to remove the slide. Let's put in the other one up. And no, that's not the one. It's the other one over here. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. I think. Uh, let me let me see a little bit. And refocus. I think here we see. Oh, that's a, that's actually surprisingly nice. This actually worked pretty well. I'm happy. Look at this. Look, uh, we can see the. Let, let's go up with the magnification here. Yeah, a little bit of trial and error, and and look at this here. Look at those nice. <laughs> the, those cells they kind of fit into each other like puzzle pieces. Yeah. You might be able to calculate the hair density. Yep. Um, if I, um, as a matter of fact, if uh, you, yes, um, if uh, I know the size of the piece of glue, which I can cut, of course, uh, then it, that might be possible. Yeah. Uh, actually, I like this one here also quite a lot because look at the cells here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, is that the stoma? The, 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 the question is, is, are those little things that you see, are these stoma? I, 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 I think these are here as well. I don't. I don't think that these are stoma because it's a top surface, and generally, you don't find stoma on the top surface because this would be uh, counterproductive. There would be way too much water loss because this is where the actually the heat of the sun is, and, and then uh, the water is going to evaporate out away on the top, and. Uh, so um, actually uh, the uh, top surface of the leaf is, is pretty tight, even watertight. So the epidermis, which is the top layer that we're looking at right now, actually produces a so-called cuticle. The cuticle is made of wax to uh, seal it off so that there is no water loss. So um, what I think, what you see those, those large structures that you see, um, those, yeah, I don't know, they appear to be a little bit also like, like here, okay? But, um, this one I like a little bit more because you see the actual shape of the cells, how they are actually fitting together, almost like puzzle pieces. Yeah. Let's go up. So this is not 20 times, uh, 40 times. So this is the, what was this? this is the tomato, tomato leaf uh, from the top. Why tomato? Well, as I just mentioned, I was, uh, I just happened to have tomato plants uh, yeah, on my balcony here. Okay. Here again, the individual cells. Now, because this is a DIC microscope, most of you will probably, if you're on the bright field, are going to see it like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. quite, uh, quite nice. Yeah. So this is now 40 times magnification. And yeah. I'm, I'm myself uh, always, I've been doing this now for quite, uh, quite often, <laughs> but I myself am always a little bit surprised by the amount of detail that you're still able to capture by uh, using this technique. Yeah. 
Okay. So these are basically the cells um, of a tomato plant. So I think I still have uh, one more leaf left over that I wanted to show you because um, today's live stream is going to be a bit shorter unless you have any specific questions <laughs> that uh, you want me to address. And uh, yeah, it's this plant over here. I've made four spots. Uh, again, this is the bottom side. And uh, let's try to get something off here. Sometimes you end up destroying the leaf as well in this process. So what I found uh, useful is, is not to make them too big because if you make them too big, then um, there is simply going to be too, it's going to be difficult to peel off. Yeah? So I don't know, I can do it like this. So with the impression towards the top and let's give it a try again. And here we go. Also quite nice. Let me open this a little bit brighter. Look at these cells here. <laughs> and how many of you are able to see the stoma? <laughs> yeah. Plenty of them. Almost looks like, like a, I don't know, fencing. <laughs> okay. Greetings from Germany, yes. <laughs> Greetings from Austria. <laughs> so, look here. Let's open it a little bit more. Yeah. Nice uh, cellular shape. You can see the different plants obviously have uh, different, um, yeah, different shapes here. So that's the 20 times objective. And I think that those smaller oval structures, uh, they might be the stoma, I don't know. Um, you, normally you should be able to see some kind of a, a gap in the middle. Maybe I'm, it's simply not well resolved here yet. And there is a little gap here. Ah yeah, as a matter of fact, there is. Doesn't go up with the magnification yet anymore. Yes. Let's focus and uh, have a look at one of them. Hmm. Yeah, I think these could be the stoma. I don't, I'm not quite sure, but they must have openings. Otherwise, uh, there is no possibility for um, for gas exchange to happen. Yeah, for those of you who joined in um, a, a little bit later, uh, what I'm doing here right now is is uh, I'm uh, putting uh, some glue under the microscope um, so and uh, the glue um, contains the impression the surface impression of leaves so i applied a little bit of uh, glue on um, some plant leaves uh, primarily on the bottom side and i carefully peeled it off and uh, this is when you're able to see structures uh, structures like this yeah so in other words, uh, what I can recommend um, is, uh, is um, yeah, and it's uh, of course in, uh, some experimentation, of course, different types of leaves um, are quite uh, in nice to look at uh, the bottom side or in the top side. And of course, also experimentation with uh, um, yeah, different kinds of glue. Um, I'm using this glue, which is a general purpose glue. It contains acetone. Um, yeah, the glue is relatively fast drying, so um, I've uh, seen that it really does not damage the leaves uh, very much because acetone, of course, is a solvent, um, but uh, and the amount is only very small. Um, but of course, you can also use water-based glues, like I've used wood glue, but I was a little bit impatient because uh, this takes, of course, a long, much longer time uh, to to dry. Um, but this uh, seems uh, seems to work fine. Um, they have also water-based glues, um, and yeah, I've, I've tried several, they all work, uh, um, and uh, yeah. Um, what I can only, I would say that the main, the main um, factor for success or, or failure is indeed the surface uh, texture of the leaf. Um, so, um, the, yeah, this is the, the, the tomato leaf here is, is the most difficult one. I've tried some leaves uh, before, um, and I was not able to get the glue off at all, um, and, or very difficult. Um, because especially if they are, it's kind of you know, fuzzy and there are lots of hair, then it's very difficult. And then as, as you've seen over here, some of the glue really separates quite nicely and easily, like, like this one over here. Yeah. Um, also possible to experiment by applying a second layer. See, this one actually, yeah. Once you've got 
God, it, it really goes off easily. Yeah. Um, the next uh, step uh, would, of course, be um, some kind of a um, yeah a way of, of making a permanent mount uh, of this. The question is, how can you do that? So what I would suggest, I've not tried this myself, but um, you see that there, um, the importance is that there is a refractive dif difference in refractive index. Um, so right now it's surrounded by air, and I think that this is necessary maybe to actually see the surface texture better. Um, so uh, adding glue over here obviously is, is a very bad idea to make a permanent mount because it's just going to dissolve this glue. So my suggestion would be, didn't try this myself yet, but uh, what you do is, is the following. You simply take a cover glass, you put it over it, and you press it a little bit. And then what you do is, is you take some sticky tape, which I don't have, <laughs> and you simply put some sticky tape um, around it. Yeah? Um, it should store for eternities because um, it's completely dry. There is no yeah, yeah, decomposable material here. And I think that's the easiest way. Another way that, um, another thing that you can try to do, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to maybe, maybe in an upcoming live stream, I'm going to show you how to use a slide ringing table. You can actually make a ring uh, using nail polish, um, which uh, kind of um, acts uh, like a spacer, a distance spacer. And uh, then you can also um, put a cover glass on top of it and then seal everything off nicely with some nail polish. It looks a little bit nicer maybe. Um, but um, I think this is also fine. So all you do is, is you put a cover glass on top and, and you cut off very tiny and thin strips of, 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 of sticky, sticky tape and simply fix the cover glass um, to the slide. And then you have a permanent slide yeah, of, of, your, um, of your glue impression. Yeah? So this is something I simply, um, uh, simply um, also recommend. Um, yeah, so uh, there are many possibilities, many possibilities for experimentation here. Uh, yeah, so it's been now um, half an hour um, approximately, and uh, I'm pretty much done with all of my samples. Let me see, artery and vein, I just happen to have some, you know what, I've got over here. Uh, just by chance, I happen to have a permanent slide of a leaf cross section here. So maybe um, I can just demonstrate to you or show you, I don't know if it actually shows it quite nicely, the different layers of the leaf. Okay, maybe also the sponge and the palisade mesophyll. I don't know how good the quality of this slide is. Let me see. Where is it here? Here is this it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I, I gotta I gotta move in here. So that is a cross section of a leaf. Let's see. Uh, actually, it's not even that bad. <laughs> So let's go 40 times. Okay, a little bit brighter. So this is a commercially prepared. Uh, this is a commercially prepared slide, but it doesn't really have the, the typical structure that I was kind of expecting. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, look, look at look at the, the following. Okay, I'm, I, I have again a, a little bit of a labeling uh, problem here. Again, here where the finger points. Uh, this is uh, the the top side of of the leaf. Ah okay, uh, is uh, on the bottom. And this, uh, what you see here, this layer of, of cells, it's called the upper epidermis. Then you have the so-called the palisade layer, the palisade mesophyll, which are these vertical, tightly packed cells. Okay, um, yeah. Um, Yeah, um, it's also a comment here. I would have uh, expected that the top layer of most leaves uh, would be smooth uh, due to a wax layer, the cuticle. Yes, surprising. There's still lots of uh, texture left. Yes, um, as a matter of fact, the texture that the most of the texture that you see are probably the irregularities of the individual cells. Yeah, um, and yeah. So um, and uh, yeah, again, my finger is disappearing because I have hidden my microphone behind here. So you see the vertical layer of cells. That's the one over here. And then you see over here, there are lots of uh, loosely packed cells. It's a spongy mesophyll. And you see also those big air spaces um, in there. And then maybe if we're lucky, I don't know if we were lucky and we let's go up yet higher. This is 60 times. Um, maybe we're able to see some of those guard cells and stomates, stomata. Um, in in, the, in this layer that now uh, is on the very top, okay? Because that is the bottom layer. Those dark red dots that you see, these are of course nuclei. This uh, specimen has been stained. No, I don't know if I've not. No. It's a little bit a question of luck because it's a very thin section, but you do see that there are plenty of air spaces in between. Yeah? Hmm. 
Okay. I, I don't know if, if, if this one could be one. And yeah, a stoma, yeah. Or, or maybe maybe the, maybe this one over here, yeah. I guess it's a question of patience um, 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 of finding uh, finding them, yeah. But uh, yeah. But what we've been doing, of course, is we looked um, at uh, yeah at the surface. So this is a cross section. What we've been doing now is, is we've of course looked uh, looked at it from from um, from the top. Yeah. 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 So yeah, <laughs> comment beautiful. Yes, uh, as a matter. Ah, that's a nice. Okay. Um, look. Um, okay, I, I got it just because I see this. Uh, because there, um, also on Reddit, uh, very often people post questions and they don't know what this is. Um, this look. Look at this um, strange uh, spiral-shaped structure that you have over here, going horizontal. You find them quite common. Those spiral-shaped structures. Um, that's called xylem, and these are cells that transport water. And those uh, spiral-shaped structures or ring structures are like reinforcements uh, that prevent the cell from collapsing. Um, and they also give, uh, therefore, a lot of strength uh, to the cell. Um, so if you um, uh, observe plants and you see long spiral-shaped or ring-shaped structures, yeah. Um, like almost like a spiral notebook, almost much denser. Yeah, the spiral of a spiral notebook. And then you know this is xylem. Yeah, and the xylem that these are the cells that transport water. Yeah? Um, okay, I'm gonna give you an analogy. If you, for example, look at uh, at the throat here. Okay, there are also these cartilage rings that you have. Okay, to provide a support and strength. And that's basically uh, similar. So um, they can be quite long. Um, I've put some banana under the microscope uh, some time ago, and uh, they also have long xylem. Bananas you have to compress uh, because they're so soft. Yeah. Yeah. And look, that that's interesting. Did uh, the huh, because uh, of this the, we talked about the smoothness of the um, of uh, the, the comment of the, but look at the, look at this and the bottom side here that is the surface, the top side of the leaf, and look at those uh, uh, um, outgrowths here. I wonder what function they they perform. Yeah. 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 Again, over here, those uh, spiral-shaped uh, structures ring. Yeah, that's again again xylem. Yeah. So this was basically a. This was sixty times. Yeah. This was basically a a short uh, intro. Um, yeah. By making of 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 leaf impressions. Yeah. Another comment today. I identified a lot of plant uh, parasitic fungi fungi with a microscope. Rust fungi, smut fungi, and so on. M mildew. Maybe you could also show some of them on your channel. Yeah, I could. Uh, I gotta obtain them somehow. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. Some people once actually sent me. Um. Sent me some leaves, and they were kind of wondering. There seems to be some kind of a fungus uh, growing on it because there was this fuzzy layer of it, on it. And then it turned out when I put it under the microscope, it was not a fungus, but these are called trichomes. Trichomes are hair. Very, they're kind of star hair, a star shaped hair. Um, they looked like a fungus when you just looked at it uh, from yeah you know, without the microscope. But um, yeah, um, if I get some of those plant parasites, I know that um, in my slide box there are some parasites as well. But these are mostly animal parasites. Yeah. But uh, when I find something in my garden, then of course I'm going to put it under the microscope as well. Okay. Yeah. But I'm 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 getting carried away now because actually <laughs> I wanted to talk mostly about making those uh, those leaf impressions here. Uh, but um, I think um, yeah, for today I'm just going to leave it right now. It's been almost 40 minutes. Powdery mildew is easy to see even if you are not very familiar with them. Yep. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look. Uh, I know that uh, the plants in my garden, they had another problem, aphids. <laughs> yeah, they were kind of, the aphids were growing like crazy. These are little, little, yeah, little insects. And um, they kind of really um, destroyed many of the leaves. Um, yeah, and uh, it, it, at the beginning, I thought that uh, the, uh, the berries that we were growing, they were kind of had some kind of a fungal infection because they all shriveled up and, and, and turned bad, but then at a closer inspection, I was able to see that these are actually those aphids that were kind of destroying those leaves, yeah, and therefore, yeah. 
Um, so I was struggling a little bit. Uh, I, of course, did not want to use any <laughs> any chemicals or, pes uh, or uh, pesticides to remove those because I want to eat the ber berries uh, the, yeah, directly <laughs> and no pesticides. So uh, we tried uh, soap water and, and all of these uh, yeah, these remedies um, and yeah, with limited success. <laughs> um, I think uh, yeah, maybe, maybe the weather plays also an important uh, role here. Okay, uh, okay, folks, um, I'm running out of uh, topic uh, topics uh, for now. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. Maybe next next time, I think about actually showing you my slide ringing table. I know many people don't have a slide ringing table. Um, it's not necessary. Yeah, um, it's not absolutely necessary to have one, uh, but there are some workarounds as well. And those light ringing tables, what they allow you to do is, is they allow you to actually make space rings if you want to prepare slides in such a way um, that um, you know, if you want to seal them off, that it does not reach uh, the specimen. I, I need to show this to you how this actually um, how this actually works, but I think it's uh, one of the things that I'm going to demonstrate uh, in one of the upcoming um, videos. Okay, um, I think I'm just gonna leave it um, at that uh, for today. I encourage you to try it out as well. Uh, this video is going to, of course, uh, after the end of the live stream, go online again. Uh, so this means uh, that uh, anyone can view it. And if you want to share your experiences uh, with making those leave impressions, please uh, do post comments um, to this um, as well. Ah, I haven't been able to, okay, <laughs> to get hold of you, Pearl, to make permanent slides. It's a pain in the neck, I know. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> extend the live stream a little bit because I got some questions here. Upearl is a mounting medium um, and the mounting medium um, is a very commonly used mounting medium, especially by people who are mounting insects. And Upearl has a significant advantage um, over other mounting media. I mean, you can, of course, they have plenty of mounting media. You can buy them from chemical supplies companies that are delivering hospitals and because they're em embedding uh, in histological sections and so on. But Uperol has the advantage in the sense that you can basically take a, a, a specimen which is reasonably small and you put it into alcohol to remove the water. And then and then what you do is, is you can directly take it from the alcohol and mount it in Uperol. And many other modern uh, mounting media don't allow you to do that because there's a little bit of water left and this little bit of water is already able to cause some clouding um, of the mounting medium. In that sense, you really has the nice advantage. It's very, yeah, very, 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 um, very nice to use. Okay, and, and it's also a comparatively safe one because you're not messing around with any um, poisonous organic solvents like xylene and so on, which you kind of want to avoid in your household. And the question is now is, is where do you get this Uperol? Okay. Um, and uh, I got mine um, indeed uh, from um, a shop uh, selling entomological equipment. And what you can do, and I know that Uperol is being sold, and, but you have to contact chemical supplies companies. Um, and uh, those that are yeah, Sigma, Aldrich, Merck, and so on. And uh, they're generally supplying to, to universities and research institutes. And it's a little bit uh, questionable of whether they're actually also supplying to private people. Yeah? Um, I was able to get Uperl from uh, Hampstead uh, Highlight Company. Ah, okay. Yes. Great. Um, it's so they, they, it is available um, from chemical companies because it is used. It, it is used uh, in research, especially when you want to mount insects. That's one of those standard mounting medium media that uh, is used. Um, the Uperl has a disadvantage, and that is the extremely long drying time. So uh, depending a little bit on your ambient temperature. Um, you have to maybe wait several weeks for the Uperl to completely dry, okay? Um, so this is something that you have to be aware of. Um, there are other modern mounting media um, around that uh, dry much faster. If you want to make permanent slides, and if you would simply want to try it very quickly, um, then my recommendation is, is that you use clear nail polish. Clear nail polish also works. Um, you will basically put the specimen first into acetone to completely dehydrate it. The disadvantage with clear nail, po nail polish is that it really has a strong tendency to shrink. Okay. 
Yeah. So it says here, yeah, somebody commented here um, where you got Uproll, the companies in the US. I don't know about the availability in Europe. Yes. Um, many, in some cases, those uh, companies have um, either um, daughter companies in Europe as well, um, or you have to simply contact the chemical supplies company in Europe. Um, you cannot um, obtain these things over Amazon because a few years ago, Amazon got really strict um, about sending of chemicals. So I've seen that uh, certain things that were e more easily available before simply cannot be bought anymore. Even simple stains that could be easily bought or yeah, or immersion oils uh, yeah, it became more and more difficult. So there seems to be some kind of a new law concerning the sending of of, um, of chemicals. Yeah. So my suggestion is is um, yeah. Uh, to to maybe find uh, chemical companies that uh, that uh, yeah, supply those, or maybe you're able to contact people who are re researching uh, insect researchers because they use this as well. I found a shop in Germany, but they don't deliver to uh, to the Netherlands. Not only that, um, you can be, you even be happy if they deliver to private people because sometimes they don't want to do that. Yeah, um, so this is indeed a um, an issue um, that um, yeah is known. Um, there is also what some people have been doing. I tried it myself as well, is to make uh, one's own mounting medium. Um, however, with limited success, uh, because if the substances don't completely dissolve. I've also tried to do the following. This is a very common glue, which is, uh, yeah, uh -huh. um, it's a general purpose glue, which uh, can be dissolved in acetone. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's, uh, it might also be nitrocellulose, which is actually, I think, a similar substance uh, to the nail polish. Um, and you can dilute this also down and, uh, yeah, maybe press out some of the glue and mix it in with a few drops of acetone and then try to use that as a, a mounting medium. Um, uh, limited success as well because of bubbles forming, clouding and so on. But the clear nail polish does work to a limited way. Um, I suggest clear nail polish or even colored nail polish to simply ring um, the dry mount. So what you have is the actual specimen is um, in surrounded by air and the uh, the nail polish on the outside simply to stabilize the cover glass. Yeah, so this would be a possibility. Yeah, yeah, but that is a little bit of yeah an issue here. Um, how do you, yeah, how do you keep those slides? Yeah, you want to put a label on it. You want to, um, yeah, basically also keep those slides because maybe some people want to. Um, you want to quickly show your friends and family members of some of your slide collection. And then, of course, uh, it's nice to have um, a nice light box. Yeah? So this is a, a somewhat, the mounting medium issue is somewhat of a, um, admittedly, a, a, a slightly problematic issue. Um, what you can try to do is, is uh, you can try to make your own glycerin gelatin, which is a water-based mounting medium which contains glycerin, easily available, available and also gelat uh, gelatin. Um, this is a mounting medium which uh, is commonly used for very delicate specimens, uh, for example, pollen and water organisms because this mounting medium um, yeah, is semi-solid. It does not completely dry out yeah? because of the, the, the glycerin that's in the mounting medium simply also absorbs a little bit of the moisture of the surrounding air. So it's not a complete drying and therefore glycerin jelly or glycerol gelatin is commonly used for water organisms um, and also for pollen uh, because pollen grains from plants uh, they also when they completely lose water they dehydrate to shrivel up and they completely lose their shape so um, you cannot use a uh, uperol for example um, or or other resin based mounting media so my suggestion is is um, yeah in this case to um, to experiment a little bit okay so I'm sidetracking again um, here. Um, I'm going to leave it um, as, as is. Um, yeah, please do check out all of my YouTube channels that I have. I keep them more or less uh, uh, regularly updated. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, I wish you all the best. And last comment here, it should be very easy to see it's the powdery mildew on maple leaves. Okay, uh, you'll see white spots that look like paint. You can mount them using adhesive tape. Should be quite easily to see the uh, conidia um, or in glycerin. Um, yeah, the glycerin, I mean, um, yeah. Uh, could you uh, seal it with nail polish? I'm going back. Y yes, a sealing with nail polish does work. Sorry for me uh, jumping around a little bit. I'm reading the comments and uh, yeah, uh, 
and the thing is the following um, sealing with nail polish just a short comment when you apply nail polish here on the side what's going to happen is that the nail polish is immediately going to be pulled in all the way um, to the um, to the specimen and it's going to cover the specimen and um, if the nail polish contains a solvent um, then it might dissolve the glue and you don't want that okay so what you're going to do is the following um, you are going to apply um, I should demonstrate this. I'm, okay, I'm going to do this in the next live stream. You're going to apply uh, some uh, nail polish here on the corners. Okay. Um, so there's going to be a rim of nail polish and you allow it to dry. And then you basically uh, put it over um, the specimen. And then you can seal it uh, with more nail polish. And because of the, of the rim of the nail polish, uh, because of the capillary action, it's not going to go in all the way. Okay, so it's kind of like a protective ring uh, that you have. Because if you put nail polish on here, it's going to be sucked in all the way and then it's going to cover the specimen. Yeah? Okay, um, I'm going to now leave it at that. Uh, at least now I know what uh, to uh, do the next time. I'm going to show you how to use nail polish, how to make some permanent, uh, permanent mounts. Um, but uh, yeah, for today, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, yeah, I encourage you to try out uh, this as well, to do a little bit of experimentation. And uh, yes, uh, happy microbe hunting as always. And uh, yeah, see you around next time. Yeah, hope to see you again. Bye-bye.